on stuff with like, our time. Mainly frequencies, yeah. because that's what we're going over today. Exactly. So let's start off. So what do we call this side of the screen? PFD, primary yeah. flight display. This side? MFD. Perfect, multifunction flight display. Yep. In the middle here, we call this our audio panel. So this is everything to do with what we're hearing. Yep. Okay. So we've got a COM1 mic, COM2 mic, COM3 mic, COM1, COM2, COM3. So if we want to talk over one of these comms, we're going to have the mic selected. Because then that means when we hit our push to talk button, that's going to be the frequency we're talking over, whatever's tuned into those. Now this plane, it only has plugged in COM1 and COM2. We don't have a COM3. Okay. We've only got two sets of frequencies there. Okay. But you got to think, this system is in all sorts of different planes, so there yep. could be a plane that does have three radios. Yep. We do not. So this really doesn't do anything. Um, this little speaker button, mm -hmm. that's going to make the volume come out on top of our heads here. Mm -hmm. um, because down here, we also have a handheld mic. So let's say we're flying around. Um, you can hear everything coming through your headset. But when we push our push to talk, you should see a little TX pop up saying mm -hmm. that we're transmitting. Trans so let's say that button isn't working. It's gone out. Well, just grab down here. You can use this as a radio. Gotcha. And you'll still hear everything. So yeah, if you have a headset failure, mm -hmm. you can just press speaker, and that's how you communicate. Crank it up, take your headset off, and you're still good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool, that's your backup. Yep. Exactly. Got you. Because, I mean, headsets go bad, and maybe your wires have frayed, you know, over mm -hmm. thousands of hours of use. And... I had read about a guy on his check ride, his uh -huh. headset failed on him. Yeah. And I was like, uh, if you don't know how to communicate, then what do you do? Uh -huh. Right? There so that's go. cool. I like that. And it plugs in. Too, so make sure it's plugged in. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, or you know, maybe another thing. Maybe just this push to talk is bad. Maybe you can put in your headset on this side and just mm -hmm. reach over and use this one. It sounds like a little more work than just using this Got mic. You. So, um, let's see. So that's our speaker and then like marker, high sensitivity. That's going to be IFR stuff, EME, ADF. We don't have that in this plane. Nav 1 and Nav 2, that's going to be for the VOR radios. Yep. Because um, we can tune it in, and if you click... <laughs> Go on, Duchess, get out of here. So if you click on there, you'll actually, you can hear some Morse code. They put out the identifier of the station so that you can confirm it's the correct station. Gotcha. Um, auxiliary, I think there's a, here's an aux input. Okay. So if you wanted to ever want to jam some music, you can bring a gotcha. cable in. And... <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> the headset's got a Bluetooth, so if it wants yeah, to play music, we exactly. can. Exactly. But... Um, now, this play button, if we hit that once, it'll play back the last transmission it heard. So we got a, we received from Tower. Uh -huh. We didn't hear what they said. We okay. press that. We get to hear it again. Yep. And then we reply. If you press it two times, it'll go back two transmissions. Okay. Three times, three transmissions. Now the problem with it is, is if you didn't understand what they said, and then you hit here and play, it sounds exactly like Tower talking. Mm -hmm. Then maybe while you're hitting play, then they key the mic again to speak to you and you can't really hear much of a difference between the two and all of a sudden it gets really confusing when what was said what so if you don't hear something i just say what was that i honestly i never use that play button gotcha. um maybe someone more capable could <laughs> but <laughs> for me it just makes things confusing if i didn't hear you the first time me hearing it again doesn't mean i'm gonna hear it again <laughs> yeah Got exactly you. maybe they mumbled it and you couldn't understand yep. it anyways well, um, Manual squelch, when we press this button, it makes these knobs change the sensitivity of our mics. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, if it's not clicked manual, it's just automatic, where you just have to speak a little forceful and it'll pick up. Pick up. Which that's how we had it the other day. Now when we get here, crew, ICS isolation. So that's intercom system isolation. Mm -hmm. If you would just hit pilot selected, you're going to be the only one that can hear air traffic control 
and you, you're not going to be able to hear anybody sitting in the plane. You won't be hear any of them. If I'm okay. talking, you won't hear me even because gotcha. you've only got pilot selected. So I'm just listening to the radio. Let's say everybody else wants to have a conversation. Exactly. I disconnect all of them. By you're coming pilot. into a bit. You're coming in the bureau. Everybody's talking. They're having a good conversation. You don't want to have to tell them to shut up. Yep. You hit that. Now you can focus on ETC That's and they great. can continue on. Yep. Um, or if it's you got another pilot in the front, loud kids in the back, you can do pilot and co-pilot together. And it disconnects them, mm -hmm. but we're still good. They can still talk together. We can still talk together. We'll both hear ATC. Got you. So honestly, it's a nice tool. And then otherwise, just these knobs here. See how pilot it points to the little circle? This, yep. And passenger to the big one, meaning that this knob here is only going to do your volume of what you hear everybody else talking. Not ATC volume, just the passenger volume. volume. Exactly. Um, whereas this big knob is going to do me and the other two in the back. So if we're flying along and I'm a little, I'm way too loud, and you're like, dang, Luke is deaf. Like, why has he got it up so loud? It's it's, it's completely bad. separate on your own. You can adjust gotcha. it where you want, and it doesn't change mine one bit. Gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah. Because right. that is, a, you are louder than ATC for me. So just, just so adjust I'll adjust your that volume. because when I have you, uh, when I have the volume so I can hear ATC, uh -huh. I'm like, damn, Luke's loud. Yeah, there and you go. And so that's that's nice to know. Now I know that I can change your volume so I can hear ATC better. Exactly. Good. Because like I'm really sensitive to noise, and I usually, if everything's set, even on my headset, I've got it turned all the way down. I have everything really quiet while I'm flying because mm -hmm. the loud voices drive me nuts. Got you. Oh. I'm deaf, so I don't have that problem. <laughs> huh? What? Huh? <laughs> don't play that joke with me, son. <laughs> oh, all right. Let's turn on the screen. Let's see some frequencies. I wish it had a little computer voice, like initializing system. Right. Garmin G1000 at your service. I'll just send them a letter. They'll take care of that for the G4000. I'm sure they'll be right on it. <laughs> uh, okay, so when we just have this, uh, the, the battery, not the avionics turned on, this side boots up, so then it gives us all our engine gauges. Mm -hmm. Alright, over here, let's see. Can I... Right now, I think it's set on auto. It'll actually like auto dim and whatnot, but otherwise you can use this knob to adjust. Okay. How bright it is. Um, so up top, so top left, that's our nav frequencies. Mm -hmm. That old style navigation. We'll get into that after you've sold The Morse code stuff you said, yeah. yeah. Um, so then this knob here for our nav, that's how we can change frequencies. So what's in this box is the standby. And then when we swap it in, now it's active. Okay. Okay. Whatever's in the box is standby. Exactly. Which is the opposite of what you would think right. looking at it. But whatever's inward of the screen is what's tuned in there. Um, so then over here, which frequency, if one, we two, have COM1 uh, hit, who are we going to talk to? 121.725. There you go. And right. that would be Leesburg Ground. Leesburg Ground. Got you. If we wanted to swap over the tower, how are we, how are we going to do that? It says COM right there. Press that. A little no. more firm. Okay. Yeah, it did. It's just old. There you go. There you go. Perfect. So that's how they switch the inward frequency is who we're talking to. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you wanted to change to a different frequency after that, we just turn the knobs. Just use your knobs. Little knobs as little. Yep. The decimals, big ones as a big number. Got you. Okay. If we want to change our volume for tower, they're really quiet. You and I volume is fine down here, but tower is really quiet. How could we do that? The volume for tower mm -hmm. on my my headset. Mm -mm. No. Um, is it this? Yep. There we go. Okay. So the little knob is volume push to push to squelch. Meaning if we push that in, you'll hear like static mm -hmm. over it, so that you can kind of hear where the volume would be. Okay. Because percentage is all like relative on what it has in the first place to give, okay. right? Yep. Because these planes, um, around 30, 35% is pretty loud. The other planes, you'll need it up at like 70%. So you can push to see, wait, where where is 30% so, sound like? So if you put in 70% in here and they start talking, your ears will bleed. Gotcha. Oh, let's turn these ones on. So now I just turned green. Okay because the avionics are on, so now the radios are actually on. The radio wasn't on before with avionics off. Okay. Um, 
so note here now we've got column two and see how it's got rx there yep that means they're it's receiving something so now it's not receiving something 134.32 is because that's weather which is always going yep. so if i hit i think we're going to hear a noise because of low vacuum but let's do speaker and off it goes see that whenever they talk you see rx got you so that's a good indicator as well to know you know is my radio working mm -hmm. well Here's RX, I don't hear anything. Oh, where's my volume? Volume, okay. Um, Cause then, like let's say this random frequency here, if I push our mic, We're CTX there, yep. and this started flashing. Yep. So we're transmitting. Cool. Hopefully no bees on that frequency. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. But uh, yeah, so that's how you can tell if that button's working or not. Cause if you're hitting that, you don't see a TX. Yep. Yeah, something's uh, something's going on there. And then this one is always receiving. We're just not selected to listen to. So that's I could hit just com two to listen, but now look at that. We're listening to ground and weather at the same time. Okay. So then if we're listening to it and someone goes to get a clearance, let's walk over the tower. Now I've got no idea what they're all saying. So instead of doing that, I just pretend like I'm going to talk to COM2. Because now I'm only listening to one frequency. Okay. Got you. Makes sense. Yep. Now, let's say that we came down there. Well, now that it switches, it changes our volume for that COM2 as yep. well. And if I come up here, the box moves up as well. But let's say we just listened here. Notice how that box didn't move down. So let's say I want to change my volume and also listen to this. Um, well, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to push to bring it down. And that's and what you're I controlling. Can, then I can change my volume. Got and you. Push back to COM1. So we see push for one and two. Got you. To change in between. Okay. That's really all there is frequency wise. It's just going to take a little bit of time to yep. be able to do it as fast. <laughs> yep. No, it's good. It's good to see the volume and how to control the frequencies. Playing with this a little bit and like the inside versus the headset, we'll, we'll get there. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, then on this side, enter. That boots that up because uh, what we'll get more in depth later on is let's say that you will win, you decided to go down to Vero. Uh, v. Yeah. Can't remember what that one is. V like VRB? VB. VB? Yeah, Vero Beach. Maybe um, T? No? I think there's an R in there somewhere. You think it's VRB? A VRB? Like Vero Beach? I think so. VRB? Yeah. Perfect. So I've got Vero, I'll hit enter, enter. All right, so that's activated. So now it did a line, and that's assuming we can just fly straight over Orlando International. Okay. <laughs> Which, I don't know if that'll happen or not. Um, but over here, there's a whole new world. You don't even see a button for it. You just have to move this knob over a little bit yep. and look at all these different submenus. Yep. It's a lot. So Waypoint, Here's the airport information, and it's got Vero. It's got all our runways. Yep. It's got frequencies, because if I push in, get a little cursor, I can scroll down, and let's say I want to put tower in. Well, if that's highlighted, it's just going to go into wherever that box is. Yep. So if I hit enter, now we're tuned in, and now, Switch. boom, we're good to go. Vero and now I want ground and standby. Boom, we're done. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's, yeah, it's all the same. Yeah, I swapped yep. over on yours as yep. well. Uh, if I wanted to see a METAR, I hit WX for weather, METAR, and TAF. We're not high enough to get reception for yep. it. Yep. Um, but that would be on there. Back to our info page. Um, I mean, there's, you can do intersection information. We're going to get more in depth on all this stuff. Uh, we've even got Sirius XM radio in here. <laughs> all nations. Examine all system status to see if anything's. If you get a red X, 
you know, on something. You yep. can scroll in here real quick and see, you know, well, what module was it so that you can let the mechanics know. Gotcha. Hey, this went, this went goofy. Um, like, enunciator test, if I click that, it lights up all your lights. So you can see, well, is a light out? Is out? It, yep. Yeah. Um, what else? We could do flight plan where we put in multiple waypoints. Yep. You can even save different flight plans. See how there's a few in there. Yep. Um, and then our nearest page, nearest airports, it lists them. Nearest intersections, NDVs, VORs. Because if you're close to your airport, you could just go there, press to get your cursor, and scroll down to find where you want. Got you. Cool. And it shows like your relative bearing. So in case of emergency, you can quickly go through and even see how long the runways are and what you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's a that's a beginner look at it. But we'll sit down. We'll go through every single button on here another day.